Hello, I'm Joanne Bryce and I'm here at Blossom Hill Crafts in Las Gatos and I'm going to give you a few tips on how to glaze your pots. Glaze is a combination of clay and glass and we glaze pots to make them more beautiful and also to seal the surface. We here at Blossom Hill Crafts fire our kilns to cone 10 which is almost 2300 degrees and we fire them in reduction. Reduction and heat, however, are two completely separate functions in a kiln. They are not related. So we will touch on that at a later time. Today we're just going to talk about how to prepare your pot for glazing and how to glaze. After a pot's been bisced, and never glaze an unbisced pot. After a pot's been bisced, you're going to take a clean, damp sponge and clean off the surface. You want to make sure there's no dust or debris on the surface, inside or out. Dust will interfere with good smooth application of the glaze. The next thing you're going to do is to wax the foot rim. Wax resist. Be careful of fingerprints of wax everywhere. That's why we have these paper towels on the outside of the bottles. You're going to hold your pot. I like to hold my pot sideways and wax around and then fill in the bottom with wax. I wax naturally. If there's a foot rim line like this pot, I would wax right up to that foot rim, like so, and then wax the whole inside of the foot rim. Do you ever glaze inside a foot rim? Not unless that depth of that foot rim is at least three eighths of an inch deep. So never glaze inside the foot rim. A pot that has no natural foot you simply glaze about a quarter inch up from the bottom. Your little finger is just about that width and you can use that as a little ruler because you have it with you all the time. Once the pot has been waxed, you're going to let the wax dry for a minute until it is sort of clear looking. And now we have the pots waxed and the purpose of the wax again is to keep glaze from sticking to this foot rim area and the center, you know, middle of the pot where you need to have it be clear of wax, and a clear of glaze, excuse me. <laughs> now you must mix the glaze, and the glaze is in a bucket, and once it's been sitting, it has a water film on the top. You must mix it until it looks like melted ice cream, and that means you mix, 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 so there's no heavy chemicals at the bottom because that's where all the color is. Once the glaze is mixed, you put in the pot. I hold the pot at one edge. I put it in and pull it out and give it a shake. The purpose of the shake is to get rid of air bubbles that might be lurking underneath the glaze and to smooth out the glaze so that we don't have drips and thick areas. Some people like to use glazing tongs. I don't. I don't use them for two reasons. I've seen people put holes right through the wall of their pot by gripping the tongs too tightly. And also, if you use tongs, you can't give the pot that good shake. So now I'm going to dip the other side of this pot. I'm going to stir the glaze again a little bit. Make sure there's no water on the top. Give it a dip and a shake. I like when I'm glazing a pot <clears throat> to have an overlap of the glaze so that there's, in a sense, a variety of color. This pot, you know, is sort of complex. It has texture, it has shape, unusual shape. I would never put more than one glaze on this pot. A beautiful bowl like this could have more complicated glaze. The more complex, complex the pot, the simpler the glaze. Before you glaze, before you put your pot in there, you need to check the thickness. You're going to stick your finger in the glaze and you're going to see if you can see the, the wrinkles in your skin and your cuticle. If you can, then the glaze is appropriate thickness. If it is too thick, if it looks like you have a glove on your finger, ask your teacher or one of the studio staff to help you thin it out a bit. Don't do it yourself because you'll get it too thin. Why do glazes get thicker? They get thicker as people use them. When you put a piece into a bucket of glaze, more water comes out than chemical. So the more a glaze is used, the thicker it gets. Once you've glazed your piece, 
you're going to take again a sponge, a damp sponge, and clean the beads of glaze off the wax. The wax does not magically make that glaze disappear. You have to take it off. Thank you, and I hope you glaze all your pots beautifully.